This is a zero euro banknote. It feels like a real euro, and it features real working security features, including a watermark, UV ink, a hologram, and microprint, to name just a few. They're authorised by the European Central Bank, and if it wasn't for the giant zero front and centre, you could very easily mistake it for a genuine euro. So what exactly are these banknotes, and why do they exist? Join me as I attempt to travel an entire continent through these peculiar yet fascinating notes. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. Now despite Europe being one of the most culturally, architecturally and naturally diverse continents on the planet, their banknotes are remarkably dull. It's a deliberate decision, they can't be seen to favour one country more than another, so the architecture and buildings they portray are all entirely fictional. It's a terrible shame, but I understand it. They can't just print hundreds of different designs, or it would be a nightmare and very easy to fool people with counterfeits. Enter the Zero Euro. These are souvenir notes, originally intended to promote tourism, but which have since evolved into an encyclopedia of the continent and beyond. And though there are literally thousands of designs, meaning this is by no means an exhaustive list, I've tried to acquire at least one from every country. Let's begin our journey in France, where these banknotes were born in 2015. This is the Arc de Triomphe, and I actually bought this one from a vending machine inside the monument itself. At just over 200 years old, the Arc commemorates those who fought and died in both the French Revolution and Napoleonic Wars, and the landmark can be seen again on the Champs-Élysées Zero Euro, alongside the city's Egyptian obelisk. Next there's the Sacré-Cœur, the second most visited landmark in Paris, after of course the Eiffel Tower. Now these two notes are actually polymer, rather than the traditional paper feel of the Euro. Although they normally make these in paper, I obtained them as part of a 2017 polymer collector set. It's also worth pointing out that the Eiffel Tower features on all of the notes, both as one of the landmarks depicted on the reverse, and as this strange holographic shape in the top left of every design, portraying the landmark's footprint. This symbol also appeared on the last 200 French franc note before the introduction of the Euro, featuring the tower's designer, Gustave Eiffel. Now we leave Paris behind and travel to the magnificent Palace of Versailles, again part of the Polymer series, before heading south to the Malau Viaduct, the tallest bridge in the world. Finally for France, we visit the rarest zero euro of them all, and what is in fact the single rarest banknote in my entire collection. Marineland is an aquatic zoo that in 2015 saw devastating floods. Many animals escaped, while some were left in mud-filled pools, and several even tragically died, including sharks, stingrays and turtles. Another casualty of the flood, however, was the Zero Euro machine, destroyed and lost to the water, and nobody's precisely sure how many had been sold up until that point. Whatever the number, it wasn't a lot, and the surviving notes have since skyrocketed in value, becoming the most sought after of them all. With that, let's move on geographically to Monaco, the second smallest country in the world. We keep the aquatic theme and see two notes from the Musée Oceanographique, a century-old marine museum, with the notes portraying a loggerhead sea turtle and the museum's cliffside face. Next is on to another tiny country, Andorra, sandwiched between France and Spain. The banknote features Casa de Laval, a historical house built in 1580 that serves as the headquarters of the country's general council, or parliament. Let's travel further west still to Spain, where we see the landmarks of Barcelona depicted beautifully on this note. There's a 140-year-old and still unfinished Sagrada Familia, which can be seen on the back of every note, as well as the Casa Mila, the Casa Balio, the Lizard in Park Güell, and the Columbus Monument. From the polymer set, there's also the Santiago de Compostela Cathedral, and the incredible Alhambra, a red palace and fortress complex that's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Next up is Portugal and another polymer note, featuring the Belém Tower, a 16th century fortification on the banks of the Targus River in Lisbon. Interestingly, the tower now features on the back of each note, replacing Big Ben around 2016 or 17. I wonder whatever could have led them to remove Big Ben around that year. It's a mystery, but talking of Big Ben, let's continue our journey in the United Kingdom. Now the UK never adopted the Euro, and as such, there are only a handful of Zero Euro notes here. This design sees the landmarks of London, Big Ben, Tower Bridge, the London Eye, and Buckingham Palace, whilst one of the only other ones I could find sees the RMS Titanic. The Titanic is obviously the most famous ship in history, and was built in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and set sail on her disastrous maiden voyage from Southampton. 
From the Republic of Ireland, I have five notes, portraying a map of the country, a Celtic harp and shamrocks, the Foyne's Flying Boat Maritime Museum, several landmarks from its capital Dublin, including the statue of Molly Malone, a note portraying landmarks from elsewhere in the country, including the Cliffs of Moher, and then a note dedicated to just the Cliffs of Moher. Next, let's sail upwards to Iceland, another country that, like the UK, doesn't use a euro, instead using the Icelandic krona. Because of this, no notes have been issued, with the exception of one from a series celebrating the 32 countries of the 2018 World Cup. It sees a player beside the incredible Church of Holgrimur in Reykjavik. Norway also doesn't use a euro, instead using the modern-looking Norwegian krone. And like Iceland, mainland Norway doesn't have any zero euros, although Svalbard, one of the nation's Arctic territories, does. The note features a polar bear with her cubs, beside one of the iconic polar bear warning signs. Now since this is one of my favourite designs, I'm giving five of them away over on my Instagram, at halfasleepchris, so make sure to head over there after this video for a chance to win one of these adorable banknotes. Yet again, Sweden doesn't use a euro, rather the Swedish krona, and as far as I can tell, this design of the old town island of Gamla Stan is the only note to be issued there. But Finland, which does use a euro, offers significantly more designs. The two I have portray the skyline of capital Helsinki and Santa Claus, sold at the post office in Santa Claus Village, right up in the Arctic Circle. The post office receives letters to Santa from all over the world, and is open year-round featuring postal workers dressed as elves. Next up is neighbouring Russia, which uses the Russian ruble. There are a good few zero euro notes regardless, including this wonderful design of St. Basil's Cathedral, which many people mistakenly call the Kremlin, beside this building, which really is called the Kremlin. From Russia, it's on to Estonia, where we see Tallinn's beautiful medieval skyline, before travelling down to Latvia's capital Riga. This banknote sees a rather ornate House of the Blackheads, completely destroyed during the Second World War, but rebuilt over 50 years later in 1999. In Lithuania, we visit what's left of capital Vilnius's castle, rebuilt in 1933. The original castle can be seen on the old 50 Lithuanian litre banknote, the country's pre-euro currency. Now we reach Poland, who use a Polish lotti, and the zero euro notes of which all seem to be remarkably sought after and expensive. I couldn't acquire any from Warsaw, so I had to settle for this design from the city Legnica, depicting the Piast Castle, one of the largest in Poland. It also features what appear to be some very old coin designs, perhaps from the Piast dynasty, when the castle was built. From Poland, we dip down into Slovakia and see another castle, this time in Bratislava, which stands on an isolated hill in the otherwise flat capital. The Czech Republic is another country that doesn't use a euro, using one of my favourite European currencies, the Czech Karuna. Nonetheless, there are quite a few zero euro designs, but I had to pick this one from the Usti nad Labem Zoo, featuring my favourite animal, the tapir. Now I'm aware how long and list-like this video is becoming, and I can even feel my own attention span slipping, so Austria is going to be the final country we look at in this particular video. Let's start in Hallstatt, an incredibly picturesque village on the shores of Lake Hallstatt. I actually have two banknotes from here, this traditional zero euro and this strange green one. This is actually a rival company that prints its own notes, believe it or not. They're still based upon the original euro design and also feature working security features, including UV ink, microprint and a watermark, although this brand hasn't become nearly as successful. Anyway, next we visit Salzburg, home of legendary composer Mozart before ending our tour in capital Vienna, at the majestic Schönbrunn Palace, a note from the Polymer series. So this is where we put the bookmark, and we'll continue the journey in a few weeks' time exploring the rest of Europe, and beyond? That's right, India, Peru, Japan and the United States all have zero euro banknotes of their own. But why? Find out in part two. Remember to head over to Instagram for your chance to win one of five Svalbard Polar Bear Zero Euros.